Welcome back, designers. Uh, it's it's been a while. I think I uploaded my last video like over a year ago. Uh, I'm a little out of practice on this, so just bear with me. So I, I'm doing what you saw in the thumbnail. We're actually making a little handheld battery powered um, circular saw. It's just something I saw laying around my studio one day and thought that's a good way to get back into Illustrator. Now I've done this in three not three different videos, but three different styles of video. So this one that you're watching right now is the full blown. I'm going to walk you through the process step by step, talk about each tool that I'm using along the way, uh, and just kind of give you a, a full overview of the process that I go through when I'm creating something like this. There's another video that you can watch where you don't have to listen to me babble on about what I'm doing, but it's still the full length video. It's just got music set to it. Um, and so that one, I mean, if you don't want to listen to the music, you can also just set it to like 1.5 or two speed or whatever, and just watch kind of the whole process again. And then finally, I've got just a regular speed art, the whole process broken down into, uh, I'm probably going to end up being like a, a three to five minute video uh, where you can just see the whole thing being done, just kind of high speed. So pick which one you want. There'll be links to the other ones in each video um, down in the description. You don't have to watch all of them, of course, just kind of watch the one that's most interesting for you. I'm happy to be back. There's more content coming. Uh, I am working on new stuff, so it, just bear with me. So I want to get into some InDesign tutorials this year. I'm also going to start working on some Affinity tutorials. So if you haven't heard of or aren't using like Affinity Designer, uh, Affinity, I can't remember the other three. There's there's three of them in, in total. Uh, I'm going to kind of work my way through and, and create sort of the same kind of thing that I've been doing with Adobe Illustrator on this channel, give you that step-by-step -step real in-depth on each tool. I'm also looking at possibly doing a Skillshare class for each one of the tools and covering sort of an update. Um, let me know if you're interested. I might even just do them here on YouTube again. I mean, this is kind of where my, my family of designers is. So we'll see where things go, but happy to be back. Hoping to create a lot more content this year again. Uh, and if you have any questions, shoot them down in the comments, be happy to help out. All right, let's hop into Illustrator and make a circular saw. Uh, I don't know where that one came from. All right, so here we are inside of Illustrator. Now, I normally start out with a square canvas when I'm working on something that I know is going to Instagram. I can always crop it out for places like Dribbble, uh, or if I want to do something for, you know, one of the other social medias, I can do portrait or anything like that. But normally I just, I start with a square canvas. So we're going to go up to file, down to new, and I'm just going to put in here just 2000 by 2000 pixels. So that's a good start. I don't worry about any of this other stuff. Um, you can switch color modes if you know that you're gonna be doing printing. Uh, I don't print these a lot. Every once in a while, I'll put one up on uh, Redbubble or um, different places like that. So I can always come back in and change the color space, adapt the colors for what I need. But just for now, we're just gonna go with RGB. Again, raster effects, I don't do a lot of them, so I don't usually worry about this. But if you want something that's gonna have, um, it, you know, it, if you're looking to do like drop shadows or you're doing anything that's going to have to have to have some rasterization done to it as high as possible. If you're doing print again, if you're not, you can just leave it at screen 72 DPI. Um, so it really, it, it comes down to what you're making your artwork for. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Now we're going to import. So I'm going to go again. I'm going to go file. I'm going to come down to place. And then we're going to grab our artwork and I know I've got it out on my desktop here and it's just this little sketch that I did. I'm going to crop to this corner, drag down to this corner. I already cropped it to a square. So there's our image. Quick drawing. I think it took me all of like 15 minutes to kind of get it ready. I don't go into detail with these. There's no point. I'm going to put all my detail and stuff in here, but I just kind of need the basic shape, um, I need to know where there's certain little elements. So for example, like these little bumps here and these little dots that are in the battery. I'm still not 100% if I'm going to put them in there or not, but I always like to have them. Same with the text. I might not put the lithium 18 volt. I went with Myobi instead of the actual brand name, uh, copyright, all that kind of crap. So from here, I'm going to come over to my layers menu or my layers palette. 
and then we're gonna double click on this one. We're actually gonna change it to a template layer. And the nice thing about this is it automatically locks and then we can dim the image because I don't need it as bright as it is. I don't need it like 100% opacity. So we're gonna knock it down to 50% and that way it works as kind of a guideline for us. If you wanna go lower than that, you can. Just depends on what you've got for a reference. So we're gonna create a new layer now just by clicking the little plus sign down here on the layers palette. And I'm gonna come up and grab my pen tool. Now you can just, of course, hit P on your keyboard for your keyboard shortcut for the pen tool. The fun part is always trying to figure out kind of where to start. Um, I'm gonna start with some of the, just the base shapes around here. I was gonna start with the circle, but that's gonna take a little bit of work because we also have to do the teeth and I need to figure out how many teeth we're gonna go around, but we'll get to that afterwards. Um, I'm gonna set my strokes. I'm gonna come up and go no fill. And I'm gonna go, let's go about an eight. Just do a little test line and see. That's probably not thick enough. So let's delete that one. Let's go to 12. Yeah, that's a little better. And we can always play with this afterwards. Now, so when you're working with the pen tool and you wanna let, just gonna go back here again. So let me just hit Command Z to back up. So when I draw my line, and if I wanna get out of this, right? So I've got kind of that um, rubber band effect. I just hit escape on my keyboard and that way I'm not attached to that line anymore. If I needed to continue that line, I can come back up, hover over one of the anchors, and you'll see I get that little slash mark, and that tells me I can click on it and then continue onto my line again. I get that sort of rubber band going again. Just a little quick tip. So let's go V on my keyboard. I'm gonna hit delete, and then hit delete one more time to get rid of the other anchor point. And back to P, and let's get started. Now, I'm gonna do this in a few different places or a few different um, shapes. Because what's happening here is that this actual portion is green. Uh, this portion here is green. The battery is gray. This kind of chunk of handle is gray. This is like your little kind of trigger underneath. That'll be a dark, dark, dark charcoal. And then this is gonna be silver. My blade will probably be close to silver. I'll do a little bit darker, um, or maybe I'll, I'll switch those two and go darker and lighter. This is a plate, so this is kind of like your, um, I don't even know what you'd call it. I call it a plate. That's what kind of rides across the board when you're using the saw. And then this piece here that wraps around the blade is actually translucent. So we're gonna have to figure that out um, so that you can see the blade through it, which I think shouldn't be too difficult. I'm just gonna go like with a light, light, light blue, um, possibly even just white, and then just have everything all outlined. So let's, uh, yeah, let's just get started with our pen tool. I'm gonna to start with the battery. It's kind of got the most angular shape to it. Yeah, let's go with that. And again, so I'm just gonna kind of work through. Now, some of these are gonna end up having um, rounded corners on them, but for now, I just kind of go with square just to kind of keep everything simple. And then I can come back and round off the ones that need to be rounded off. And again, I'm using that same process that I talked about at the beginning where I'm clicking, coming over, Clicking again, and I'm kind of dragging out the shapes that I need to start with. And then hitting escape once I reach a point where I no longer kind of need to draw anything. Keep in mind, you've got all of your constraining tools. Um, so for example, like I'll use shift a lot. And I always come back in and just try and make sure I'm keeping things as clean as possible as I go along. And we can do a 45 there, but it doesn't quite match up. So I'm not gonna do that. Um, and I'm, I'm being pretty true to my sketch. I don't want this to be, I, I mean, we're not drawing, you know, we're not doing a technical drawing here. This isn't a logo where we have to use, um, you know, and I hate using it anyways. Um, the Fibonacci sequence just drives me insane that you get these logo designers out there that think every logo has to be done with that or it's not a true logo. And so, I mean, just have fun with it. Do what you need to do. If, you, if you're into the Fibonacci sequence, that's fine too. I'm not, you know, that's, that's, that's your thing. Whatever you need to do 
to make sure you're enjoying your life as a graphic designer, that's what really counts. Now I'm gonna line these up. So I'm clicking on the bottom ones first that I want to align to something else. And then I'm gonna come up here and click on this anchor point because I want to align all of them to this. So when you're selecting anchor points for alignment, the last anchor point you select is the one that it's going to line up to. So I'm going to come up here, then I'm going to go horizontal align right. And that gives me kind of that clean line going all the way down the battery. And then for here, we're going to come back in and I'm just going to do a couple of quick lines. Escape out of that one. I'm going to keep this. And come down. Oh, I got to back up there. I stayed connected there. Let's try that again. There we go. And down to this one. And then I'm gonna just hit V on my keyboard to get my move tool. And I can move that kind of in. I could have just done it just without doing that, but it's just easier. So now I'm using the scale tool. So I hit S on the keyboard. And with the scale tool, I've got both of these anchor points highlighted. And it's because I wanna be able to move them both in at the same time. So automatically I'm on the center of that line by hitting the S button. And then what I can do is hit A and scale it. Oh shit, what's going on? S, oh, there we go. Yeah, I just gotta use that, not A. Don't hit A. <laughs> like I said, it's been a while. Um, so by hitting the S, S, it automatically gives you your scale tool. Then you can just go up, click on the anchor point, and pull down and it'll pull both of them in at the same time so that it scales everything kind of into the center. Wow, I'm out of practice. This is what happens when you take a full-time job somewhere and don't stick to anything design related. Now here, I'm gonna do something a little bit different because I wanna take this, and I wanna make sure that it's actually exactly the same. So we're actually gonna take this one, I'm gonna click on it, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go to transform and we're gonna go to reflect. Now I want a horizontal reflect so that it's up and down. And I don't have to do any angle or anything. I'm just going to hit OK. Oh, I did that wrong again. See? OK, let's try it again. Transform, reflect, and we're going to go to copy. So horizontal and copy because I need a duplicate of that. Then I can hold down shift and just drag this down until it lines up in the center. And then I'm going to go shift click on this other one and command J and that's going to join them together. So that's all one shape now. Hopefully you're following along so far. Um, if I didn't, and I, I don't think I did say this at the beginning, um, you can find a copy of the drawing down in the description. Um, so if you want to follow along with this, go download it now. Uh, you can actually come back and follow along again up to this point. I should have said that at the beginning. I'll make sure to put a note in the uh, description. So if you're reading that first, you should see it. All right, let's do these dots. I wasn't going to do these, but I think I am now. Yeah, let's do them. So I'm going to switch over so that I'm on a fill. i click off of that first. And I'm going to grab my ellipse tool and we're going to zoom in here. I'm going to hold down Alt on my keyboard and then hold down Shift and then pull out some dots like that. And then we can come down and I'll switch those over. There we go. That should be about right. Now I'm holding down Alt again as I drag out some cop one copy. Now the nice thing about this is once I've got one copy, if I want four of them in exactly the same measurement or same equidistance away from the last one, now I can go Command D and Command D again, and I've got four that are exactly the same uh, distance apart from the last one or from whatever I made these first two. So then we can grab this. I'm gonna Alt click and drag out a copy. And we're gonna put it right about there. And then I'm gonna highlight both of them, drag out another copy. And then our last one, I'm just gonna do this one and drag that out until it's there. So now I'm gonna group these all together, just uh, highlight everything. So I just drag a bounding box around all of them, Command G on my keyboard. And then we're gonna click on our outer shape and I'm gonna click on it twice, have you noticed that? So we click here 
And then I'm gonna select this shape and I'm gonna click again on this shape with both of them selected. And you'll see how that gets really dark around there. This is my key object now. And you'll see this little icon up at the top actually changes so it's got a key inside of it. And now I'm aligning to that shape. Because now what I wanna do is actually align vertical center. And so that shifted these down just ever so slightly. So now I know they're right in the middle. I'm not worried about the rest of the shape on that. All right, let's zoom back out and see how we're doing so far. Looking good. I mean, it's it's getting there. We got a little bit to do with like some round corners and stuff just to give it a little bit of style, but it's a good start. Okay, so let's go here. I'm actually gonna come right about there for that angle. And then we should be able to do this one right about there. And I'm only gonna come up to here. It's a bit of a curve. All right, now I wanna switch back over so that I'm doing. Now I don't know if you, if you caught that. Um, so even though I'm actually with a tool right now, I've got, right, I've got that little rubber band, I can still come out here and select certain things. So in this instance, I realized that I was doing it with a fill still and I wanna actually do this with a stroke. Now, the other thing I need to do is change the uh, thickness of the stroke. Unfortunately, that one you can't do once with everything selected. I'm gonna have to do that afterwards. Uh, but I'm gonna finish up this line first and then we'll come back to that. A little bit of an angle there. I'm gonna hold down Alt. And with the pen tool selected, if I hold down Alt, I can actually get that handle. So I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit and you'll see it change to that pointer. So what I can do then is I can actually drag this anchor point back up or this handle back up and I don't come out so far then. So that way I can get this angle, say right about there, and then we're gonna come down and swing that one in. And I think that should be pretty good. Let's zoom back out. Oh yeah, that's good. So I'm gonna finish that line off. Let's go, yeah, let's go to this one. Get a bit of an arc on there. I'm gonna click here. And if you see how I got that little arrow again down beside the pen tool. So now what I'm gonna do by clicking on this anchor is instead of it being uh, a curved anchor, it's actually gonna be a pointed anchor. And that way with my rubber band here, now I've got a perfect corner here. So when I come up and make this corner, which I should actually start here, I end up with this being a square corner. And then I can come out here with the pen tool. I'm gonna have to check the saw and see what this is, but I think, yeah, okay, we're gonna come to here. Close that off. I'm actually gonna come up here. Okay. I see what's going on here. You know what, we're gonna back up just a little bit because this is actually supposed to be a groove in that. Okay, yes. I'm gonna come up to above here, bring that in like that. And then escape out. Now what I'm gonna do, because I need to break these two apart, I'm actually gonna highlight the whole thing and I'm gonna come over here to my pathfinder and I'm gonna hit this one here, which is divide and that's gonna give me that shape. We can rework this. Um, actually, you know what I'm gonna do instead? I'm gonna back up here, I'm gonna copy this. Command C. Now I'm gonna break this apart. I'm gonna go Command F to paste it back in. And I'm gonna select, I'm gonna deselect these two anchors. No, these three anchors right there. And then hit delete. Okay. Now I'm gonna select all of this and I'm gonna to go to I to get my eyedropper and we're gonna grab that there to get the weight and everything. There we go. Okay, hope you're still with me. Again, I apologize. I'm, uh, uh, yeah, I'm a little rusty, obviously. I should have maybe done some practice before I did this, but I want you to just see, I mean, part of me getting back into this again and doing these is, I want you to see that it, I mean, being a graphic designer doesn't mean that you can't step away from it for whatever reason. Um, those of you that know me know the reasons that I stepped away. Um, those of you that don't, I mean, maybe someday we'll have a story time here on the channel. 
Uh, if you want to know the story, you can always reach out to me too. We can maybe get to know each other. I'll share some details of my life with you. But um, for now, all you need to know is just that I'm back. All right, this is going okay. Um, so again, a lot of this is just gonna be pen tool work. Uh, if you haven't worked on the pen tool before, it, it just takes practice. It's just time in the tool to kind of get used to how it works, what certain things do, right? If I click on this or if I click on that, or if I drag out this way, what's gonna happen? It's like this here, I'm not, I, I'm not digging this. So I'm actually gonna put an, an anchor mark right there in the middle. So I clicked on the path with my, just my select tool, the V key on your keyboard or the little black pointer. Then I went to P for my pen tool and I put an anchor point right there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that anchor point and I'm just gonna hit delete. Okay, and that's gonna get rid of that anchor point for me. And because I did that, because I see that these two lines are actually curving down. Um, so I'm, I'm just gonna go with that. And I think we can go back to actually having these ones joined together to get a little bit nicer curve up here. Maybe see, I'm gonna have to get rid of an anchor point. So let's get rid of that one. And I'm gonna highlight those two and they're a little off, I think. Let's just see, no, we're good. I should, no, uh, maybe not. Let's go that and that just to make sure they're aligned. Then I'm gonna hit the anchor and then I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna go convert to square and then round. There we go, that's better. Okay, so let's draw this one in. Uh, I'm gonna come up here and then down to here and then we're just gonna curve it. And then I'm gonna just duplicate that one But like that, I can actually pull that up just so it meets with the path and that gives us kind of that little groove there. Okay, moving along. Let's do this oval. Um, so I'm gonna come over here and we're actually gonna click in to get to our round rectangle tool. I'm gonna go yeah, about like that. I think that looks good. And we're just gonna curve that there. Hey, almost dead on. That's pretty good. I haven't lost all of my mojo in Illustrator yet. Yeah, I don't like how that one turned out. Let's delete that one. Let's go back there again. And I think what we're going to do is do an anchor point here and then come down here. That's better. Okay. And I'm gonna escape off of there, hold down command and click. Um, so command and click, if you didn't catch that one, it's, if you have an active path, so see I've got this selected. And what I wanna do is I actually wanna start here for this curve, right? Well, if I use my pen tool and come to start there, it's gonna start adding anchor points. And I don't like doing kind of close to it and starting. When I make paths, I, I really like to join back up with another path. So if I hold down command, I get this little white arrow and I can just click anywhere. And that way I've still got my pen tool selected. So I'm not having to click back and forth between like different arrows. Um, it's just a, a quick tip to release the, uh, the anchor or the path that you've got selected. So then I can click right on top of that path and it's not actually connected to that path, right? It's just a new anchor point on top of the path itself. So let's go, I'm actually gonna come up here. I'm gonna try something. Uh, I'm gonna go A and I'm gonna select that one and we're just gonna square it off. And I want this one to have the angle on it. Then, when I connect with this one again, I can come in here. There we go. That's what I wanted. Okay, now this one's a little bit different story. Because there's an open path there, if I come up here, you see that I get that little 
anchor point at the bottom corner of my pen tool. That tells me it's actually gonna connect up with this path and I don't wanna do that. So in this case, I'm gonna drop down just a little bit below. I'm gonna make my path that I want and I'm gonna get it kind of lined up with how I want it. And then I'm gonna come back in, hit the A button on my keyboard. Uh, it's the white or the direct selection tool. And I'm gonna grab this anchor point and we're just gonna come up here until it lines up. That gives us our nice clean path with all of those intersecting, right? But there's one shape, there's another line, and then there's another line. So everything's all clean here. And I've got the shapes that I want because they're based on my drawing. Okay, let's finish this top one off. This one's a little weird because there was like this little hump inside of here. So I'm actually gonna do this first. And I'm gonna come out and we're gonna do this one. I can smooth that hump out after. Okay, so now there I need a square point. Go right about there. Let's go there, come underneath. And some of this is gonna require some cleanup. So here again, I'm coming back in, holding down option, dragging this anchor point back just a little bit so that I can come up in here and get that right now you'll see that this one looks kind of wonky now okay and if i do this because i used that little anchor this is no longer connected right so it kind of dislocates those two um handles so i'm going to come in i'm going to click on that and i'm going to come up to the top here and we go convert selected anchor point to smooth and that way it connects everything up again so i can now play with this anchor point to get kind of that smoothness that i need Could use a little bit of work. This one, if we pull that back. And again, I'm gonna hit S for scale. It's gonna stay on that anchor point. And now I can scale out those handles until I get kind of a smooth section there. You could have, I could have left it and actually used the smooth tool as well, which I might still do a little bit because it still looks a little bit off, but you get the picture for now. All right, so we're gonna connect back up here. Come in, do our handle, like, about like that. And I think right about there. Okay. She's coming together. The color is gonna make this go. And I, I'm doing the drawing in black right now, but that's probably gonna change as well. Um, I normally end up coming back in and doing my lines in clean that one up after too. I come back and do my lines in like a really dark gray um, and then do everything else in color and add shadows and we'll get to all of that today. Okay, now the funny thing is this shield, I actually looked at it on the piece itself and I'm 99% I'm sure that it's not exactly circle, it's more of an oval. Um, so that's how I drew it. I might not end up doing that for this because I think it's just gonna throw off the aesthetic of it. But um, I, anyways, I'm gonna grab my ellipse tool and we're just gonna get started doing some, some circles here. So I got that one. Uh, Command C, Command F to paste in front. And I'm just gonna hold down Shift and Alt. We're gonna narrow that one down. And this is kind of like the little bolt uh, inside that um, holds the blade on. So now there's one other little thing that I'm gonna do here, and we'll see if it actually stays this way, but uh, I'm gonna try something. Command C, Command F again to get another one. I'm gonna shrink that one down. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Okay, no, that's not gonna work. It's too small. Uh, I, you can get into small details and stuff when you're actually making these, but instead I'm just gonna do this. There's just a little hex bolt inside and I might have to actually knock down um, let's go eight on that one that'll work it's still a small detail but that works for me okay back to our ellipse tool and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the outside of this so I'm actually gonna come from the center of this and you see what I mean so like I mean I and like I said I drew it because that's what I saw you know what, let's try and stick with it. Let's try and stay true to the drawing. Stay true to your art. 
Okay, there we go. That'll work. Yeah, that'll work. Let's do it. Let's work with it. Um, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my eyedropper tool, get it to the right weight that I need. I'm going to grab my pen tool and I'm going to start drawing in some of these lines. Okay, so we're just going to start kind of off to the side here. Draw that one and then we got just a little bit of an arc on this. Again, I'm going to click this so it becomes just a straight anchor here and this is kind of a curved one it's weird because then this curves up as well and goes flat now you see what's happening here i'm trying to get on this this point here which i can now but if you're trying to get to a point and you end up like this right where it's like oh, i don't want I don't want it helping me, right? I don't want it giving me those tips about where it's lining up. Just hit Command U on your keyboard and it goes away. And then I can come in and grab whichever anchor I want. Put that one in place for that curve. I can hit Command U again and get back my, um, damn, I always forget what they're called. Smart guides, that's it. Okay, and then we're gonna come across here. I'll hold down shift and just make sure. And down, we got a bit of an angle again. Pull this one back up. That should be good. Let me come out. Okay. I'm not sure if I like that. wondering, you know what? I think I like this side better than this side. So let's do this. I'm gonna highlight it, I'm gonna go A, and I'm gonna grab this anchor, this anchor, and this anchor. And now here's the thing, when I copy this, right? I've got those three selected. When I copy, so Command C, and now I'm just gonna go Command V instead of Command F to paste in front, and you'll see, I had the three selected, it actually grabbed that last anchor point for me. So it adds on when you copy. If you're copying a line, or you're copying a segment like that, it's gonna grab the next anchor point as well. So then what I can do is again, go V on my keyboard, right click, transform, reflect. This time we're going vertical, just going across. I don't need to copy it because I've already got one. I'm just gonna hit okay. So now I've got that line come up a little bit because I need to line it up there. And I'm actually gonna come in here again, hit P, place one there and then delete it. And then what I can do is grab these two, triple click, so I'm gonna click a second time. So I'm grabbing both of them and then clicking on this one to get that anchor that key point or key element again. And we're gonna align vertical. And I want those two to line up, that's better. Then what I can do is take uh, that, let's go, I'm gonna make a duplicate of it. Yeah, that's not gonna work, so they're open. Okay, let's go with the shape builder. Um, so I'm gonna use the shape builder for this one. So shift M gives you my shape builder because all I wanna keep right now is just this segment here. So now I'm gonna hold down option and just start going over some of these lines. You know what, we should do that one first. Yeah, it's not gonna matter if I get rid of that one. Okay, let's get rid of this one. Yeah, and then I can just do A, highlight these three. Okay, yeah, highlight these three. Delete that. Oh, I can delete that one too, actually, because I've already got one. Oh, that's perfect. There we go. Okay, and then I can bring that over, highlight those, join them. There we go. That didn't work out quite how I wanted. Must be something out of alignment here. Center, center, join. Okay, there we go. Now I got it. And then all we have to do is just join these ones. It's kind of a weird looking little design, but that's honestly, that's how it looks. I'm not. Yeah. Okay. 
Now we don't need this bottom. So I'm gonna grab these. And again, Shift M to get my shape builder. I'm gonna delete that, that, and that. Now I'm gonna go V and Command J. Okay, and that's open. So let's get rid of that. Let's try here. That's what we've got the issue with. So that shape, same there. Okay, so let's go. We got an extra anger point here somewhere. Delete that one. Still got an extra anchor point. Oh, no, that's all good. Okay, I think we're good. Good, perfect. All right, let's do um, the inner part of the blade. I'm just gonna copy this one. So Command C, Command F. And that's gonna be the start to our saw blade. You can actually see over here, this is kind of the shape of the blade. It's got this kind of weird little tooth. So let's grab that. I'm gonna command three on that just so I can hide it. And I'm gonna do the same with this, command three to hide it. This is the shape that I need. And then I gotta see if I can actually get that to duplicate all the way around. And it's, so it's like this, hook here is this hook, right? So like this shape, this curve is the same curve here. So if we saw this one continue on, it would actually have that little bump. So let's let's just zoom in on this and make the shape. And then we'll see if we can get it to duplicate itself around. And I mean, it doesn't have to be exact. Again, I'm not making a technical drawing here. Um, if you were working for this company and I mean, they had hired you to like, produce technical drawings for them, then you would of course want to make sure that you're actually doing exactly what it looks like. But in this case, I don't really need that. I need this. Okay. That's not bad. Let's see if we can make this look like a blade. So I'm going to move kind of off the artboard here a little bit. I'm gonna zoom out. Got this little bit of white space down here because we're gonna try something. Now in order to get sort of duplicated items around a space, um, I'm gonna unhide everything and I'm gonna drag a copy of this over here. Okay, so we know that that's kind of our blade. I'm gonna get those two lined up. And now what I wanna do is I wanna circulate this around here. So I'm gonna highlight this and I'm gonna go R on my keyboard for rotate. And we're gonna come down and I'm actually gonna use this circle, right? So you see now how when I highlight it, I get center and we're, we're rotating still just what we have selected. But right now that blue sort of cyan crosshairs is on the center of this. I wanna go on the center of this. I'm gonna click there and then I'm gonna option, drag out a copy of this. And you see, we're gonna end up with just a little, right about there. And I'm gonna go in and, and clean this up afterwards. But for now that works. And I'm gonna go command D, Okay, and we got one too many, so I went a little bit too far. Let's try that again. Let's go option. Oh. Gotta click in the center again. And then option click. Let's go with that instead this time. That'll work. That I can work with. And we can just kind of clean things up again in between each one of them. We'll join them all together and we'll use the shape builder tool. So I'm going to get rid of this. And then let's grab all of these. And we're going to come and zoom in. Well, that worked out pretty good, actually. Yeah. I mean, it's a little off here, but again, it Part of this is gonna be hidden, so I'm not too worried about that at this point. So I'm gonna go M for my 
shape builder tool, so shift M, uh, and then we're gonna come in and I'm gonna come in with alt and just click to get rid of some of these lines that are overlapping. So we don't need them. We got a few more we're gonna have to clean up and then we'll do some joining of this and then we can clean up again. Okay, and I wanna get rid of these little overlaps. So again, when you're making stuff like this, just think about think about your audience too. Um, is it important that all of these right top to bottom line up, right? Is this something that's actually going to be seen by the public? Uh, if it is, you're gonna wanna pay attention to those angles and make sure that everything lines up and looks exactly the way that it should. Because I know that this isn't gonna be the case, I can not have to worry about it, right? So then we can go Command J, uh, and I mean, if you wanted to, we could come in and clean those up, right? So if we look at that, that gives us an idea. So corners, let's say I go to 10 instead. And that way, when I come across here and I start doing all of these, right? So we can actually grab every single one of these that needs to be done. I'm just holding down shift as I come around and highlight each one of these. And I'm just gonna go command J, uh, too many, okay. That didn't work. Let's go here, command J. So I'm gonna have to do them all one at a time. 10. And we're gonna make sure everything lines up. Command J. Why isn't that one going for me? An extra one there. Let's try to line that up again. Here. There we go. Okay, so I should explain this. This is a tough one. Um, every once in a while, you're gonna end up joining something and even though it's aligned, you're still gonna end up with an extra anchor point. It's just this frustrating, annoying Adobe thing. Um, it's been an illustrator for so long, so I'm actually just gonna remove one of those anchor points. Looks like we have another one, yep. So again, I'm gonna remove an anchor point and now I get my corner. Oh, love Adobe to death, but some days I wish it would die. <laughs> okay, there we go. I'm kidding, Adobe. There are little things that frustrate me though, um, and, and they have for a long time. And I mean, it's it's not something that, it's not like these things haven't been reported to Adobe. It's just, I think it's just the bottom of the barrel. They're like, you know what? It's really not that big of a deal. So we're not gonna worry about putting our engineers on fixing it. Um, there's other ones that I wanna get into which I'm gonna cover in a future video. Oh. I was hitting wrong keys on my keyboard. I think we just did it again. Yep. Oh, this one's even more fun. It's got anchors and let's delete that. Minus that one. Here we go. I had four. Okay, let's try. See if the alignment helps. Nope. How many are we going to have this time? Oh, just three. We're almost there.
Not 100, 10. Okay, there we go. So there's our blade. Now what I'm gonna do is click on the blade, click on this circle, which is kind of our inner blade guide. I'm gonna click on that again to align it so as the key. And there's our blade. So again, like I said, the reason I wasn't too worried about this one kind of being a little off um, is that part of the blade is hidden. So all of these will be the same, which is what counts. And if I look at this, this is actually just a little bit, let me just take this in just a touch. There, that works. Okay, moving along. Now we got this shape here, and I'm actually gonna do, let's just go to my rectangle tool, draw this one out. Let's go to 30. Good, I got a little notch here I gotta take out. Draw that with the pen tool up, up. There's about my halfway point again, just to keep this so it's the same. Transform, reflect, copy, drag it so it's centered, highlight those two, make sure they're all equal, connect. And you can even get rid of this anchor point afterwards, right? You don't need that fifth anchor point in there for something like that. Okay, what should we do next? Got a handle here that needs to get done. Let's do that because that's a quick shape. So I'm actually going to come in and this is like a, a guide. You know what? I'm going to use a rectangle for that. And I'm going to use a rectangle for the handle. But there's one thing I need to do with this is put an anchor here. And then we're gonna come up here and we're gonna go to convert selected anchor points to smooth. I'm gonna scale it, right? So we're gonna click in the middle for our scale point. I'm gonna drag those handles out. And that way when I pull this out, it kind of gives me just a little bit of a curve to the top of that. And then I need just the connector that goes onto there. Okay, we're getting there, almost done. Uh, I'm gonna do two circles for the guide or for this this kind of protector, this cover. Let's hide these for now, command three. This one's a little different. It's almost like, you know what we could do there? Let's try that. I'm gonna grab this, command C, command F. I'm gonna drag that out for the base shape on this plastic piece. There's a little bit of work that needs to be done here. But then what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna come in with a rectangle. I'm actually gonna draw a rectangle out about there. That's center. Pull that one out to there, this one out to here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing I just did. Pen tool, right about there. I'm gonna hit my scale tool. Oh, hold on first. Come up here and go and make that a curve line. Click on that and then we're gonna drag our anchors out. And then I can pull that down to get that curve. Then what we can do is come in here and into here and select both of those, right? And say right about there, 70, that should work. Cool, okay. Let's grab this. Uh, nope, that's not what I wanted. V, select the circle, Command C, Command F. And I'm gonna hold down Alt and just shrink that down so I get this curve here. And then use my Shape Builder tool. Just get rid of some stuff here because I don't need that. And I need to do those two. So Shape Builder again to grab this one and this one. 
and we're gonna turf that line. There we go. Okay. Now let's unhide a couple of things real quick. Uh, I'm gonna hide this one again and this one. I want this plus this shape builder. Get rid of that line, get rid of that shape, get rid of that line. Then this can get hidden again, command three. And now we got this here. So, just, oh yeah, that's right. Yes, because this needs to come all the way up. Okay, good, we're on the right path. Uh, I'm gonna grab my A direct selection tool just so I can pull this anchor point back down. I'm just gonna use my arrow keys for that. Hit the bend tool and I'm gonna link up with this. And that way I can keep building this shape, okay? Now again, I'm gonna pull that one back in. Right about there. Let's go there. Bring that around. And then I need this weird curve that's in here. Let's try that. Good. Okay, so I can grab this, this, shape builder, shift M. We're gonna get rid of this line, this line, and I th think, no, not the whole thing. Then what I can do is just go with my anchor tool. Select this, that, that, that one, and delete. Okay. We're getting there, we're almost done. Then we just gotta worry about colors, that's not too bad. I'm gonna grab these two, Shift M. Get rid of these two segments. Mm, nope. I got rid of too much back here. So I'm gonna grab this and this, Shift M. We're gonna turf that line, there we go. And then I can get rid of this one over here. Okay, now we got it. So this is our little plastic cover that kind of protects you from the blade. Um, I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna grab this one and we're gonna extend this all the way up and use that. And this kind of comes all the way over to here with this weird little shape. Escape out of that. Nope. Something's going on there. Let's try this again. Huh. See, that's a weird one. All right, I can't get that to go straight again. Let's back up here. Okay. Pen tool here, here. And that's what I want. Oh, this is getting really janky now. <laughs> All right, let's escape out of it. I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna create kind of the rest of this. Um, okay. Yeah, that won't even let me like use that as a, an alignment point, which is so funny. There we go, that's what I needed. Okay. It's got that, I just need to get rid of this for a second. That's what I thought. So now I'm gonna make a few circles just for these little bumps. and we're just gonna move it out just a little bit. And then we're gonna use the shape builder again. So we can get rid of these lines. There we 
go. Okay. And I know this is this is like a complete and utter mess right now, right? Like this all looks just brutal, but it'll clean up in a minute. Uh, let's go with our line tool. I'm gonna kind of line this up there and let's say right about there. Those don't need to be exact, but I can nudge that one over just a little there. Okay. I think we're good. This isn't making sense to me. I gotta probably figure out my drawing again because that, oh, that needs another, goes up to there. Okay, let me look at the star real quick. So if all else fails, have the tool <laughs> on your desk. So I just went and grabbed the tool. And, and what it is, is that this actually, like this piece here comes in front of this piece, but this goes behind that piece. So it is correct in the shaping. It's just kind of weird how it has to be put together, but I'll figure that out. I think this is gonna be good for now. Um, and I also think that this, should have actually, you know what, let's do that. I'm gonna take this, put an anchor point there, and I'm gonna connect with this and actually come like out to about there. And once we expand this shape and start doing our fills, this will make a lot more sense, I think. Um, and this actually, we can just delete those two and have this line up with that. Okay, I'm gonna have to do some figuring on that one. So I think for now I'm gonna get rid of the shield, get rid of the guard, um, and I'll figure it out kind of in my final before I actually move on to finish work. And I'll probably do the same thing with the logo. Um, just because even know what we're at here now. Yeah, we're at 55 minutes, so we're just under an hour. And I'd like to do some coloring on this so you can at least see my color process. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, I'm actually gonna take all of this. So we're gonna highlight the whole thing. I'm gonna hit Command C, zoom out, Command V, and then we're gonna drag a copy off to the side. This is my working copy. So with this one, I can kind of, you know, I don't have to worry about losing anything on this one. We're gonna come back in here and we're gonna do a couple of things. Number one, I'm gonna angle this a little bit, about 20, just to give that a little bit of a cleaner look. I'm gonna do the same thing up here with a couple of these corners. All right, so we're gonna go, let's go 10 on that one. Uh, I think the rest of these can actually stay. They're more jagged. I'm okay with that. The rest of those, yeah, I'm gonna leave everything else. So now I'm gonna start cleaning this up just a little bit. We're gonna just hit V on my keyboard and I'm gonna highlight all of it. Shift M for our shape builder. And I'm gonna come in and just start cleaning up some of these overruns that I've got like from the handle. And then we're also gonna get rid of like this line. We're gonna get rid of this line. I don't need that one. I don't need that one. This is, that's gonna end up being see-through. So because that's see-through, I'm gonna leave these ones in there, but I don't need, right, that's still blade. This is gonna be a solid color, so I can get rid of this one, that one, that one, clean up that line. Basically everything in there. Oh, I didn't wanna get rid of the whole shape though. Okay. 
this is translucent again. So we're gonna see our blade and that's the shape that comes through. So that's gonna end up being one shape. And it's behind this, so I can get rid of that one. All right, I think that's it. Do we have anything else overlapping? No. So this is gonna have to be done in a few different shapes. Um, just so I can kind of keep everything together and that might require a little bit of back and forth with, oh, you know what? There's one line that I missed there. That one can go and that one can go. Okay. Yeah, I think that's got it. Okay, and then this. We're gonna have to have a fill on that whole shape, which is gonna be a little weird. So I'm gonna have to figure that one out. So for now, let's hide that. Oh, we have to hide the whole thing. Okay, let me let me figure this out. You know what? Let's go with some color and, and we'll get it figured out from there. I might just have to play with this as an afterthought, but for now, I'm just gonna work with it the way that I've got it. Okay, so we're gonna highlight the whole thing, grab everything, we're gonna come up here to object, we're gonna come down to path, and we're gonna go outline stroke. And that gives us our whole shape, right? So now everything's outlined, um, and we can kind of work with different shapes and everything now, and I think that's what we're gonna have to probably do. The nice thing about this though is that now I can actually come in here and I can start making some shapes. We can do this a couple of different ways. Um, oh, there's so many different ways we can do it. I think the paint bucket tool is gonna be our easiest possibly. Just trying to think how would be the simplest way to go here. See, and again, it's been just too freaking long. We don't even have that anymore. What am I even talking about? <laughs> okay. Um, so what I'm gonna actually end up doing, let's highlight this again, and we're going to join it, and then I'm gonna commit again, and I'm going to go with uh, object, compound path, release, we're gonna select that, ungroup. I'm gonna zoom in and I just wanna hit shift click on this. And then we're gonna cut everything that we've got selected. I'm gonna command F to paste it all in front. We're gonna highlight it. Divide everything again. Ungroup. And you'll see what I'm getting to here. Delete. Okay, so now we got everything there. I'm gonna come over here and we're actually gonna add a new layer. And I'm gonna drag it down one and then Command F again. And that's pasted into this layer. So now, if we hide that, you see we've kinda got everything inside and everything outside, so our lines. So the nice thing about this is that I can like click here and select all of that. Now I don't want this on this line. Let's just take that. We're gonna add a different one. And what I wanna do is actually just paste it into there. So I'm gonna grab this, Command X, Command V, and then we can hide that layer. Okay. So now I can click over here in the layers palette and I've got all of this selected and that's where I can come in and change kind of to my like dark charcoal gray, right? It's not black anymore. So if we zoom in here, you can see, and if I take like a, let's just go with a square, make it black, just send it back. Okay, so you can see, so like I said, it's a really dark charcoal and that's usually what I do with my outlines. Now what we can do here is we can start doing some color. Um, now, 
this is kind of the easiest part because it's just picking colors. You can have a palette all selected, um, right, ready to go. I don't have one. I'm just kind of going on the fly, just looking at sort of the design of this um, and picking colors as I go. Those can stay black because that's what the battery is. This one can get deleted. The button can stay black. Need this, 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 nope, this. It's gonna be like a lime green color. So let's just pick, uh, that's too much. That's probably good if I go up here though. That's good. Okay, I need to add shadows, so I'm probably gonna actually, oh, these two. Oop. That one, that one. Okay. This is light, light gray, kind of like this. Then we got some other colors here. It's our little hex. Go with that. That works. We're gonna do the same with that one. There, so we kind of end up with that looking piece. Now our blade. This is gonna have to be done in a couple of different ways. Um, I think what I'm gonna do, because we're on our fill layer, I'm actually gonna delete some of these shapes. That can stay, that can stay. You know what, let's grab these. These are our actual blade itself. I'm going to have to get zoomed in on a couple of these to grab them. But, okay. That's going to be like a silver that we'll have to play with to get the right color. And then this can get deleted, this can get deleted. Uh, this and this are still part of that. And this is gonna end up being that shield kind of thing that I was talking about. We're gonna have to do that in a couple of different pieces. I'm gonna leave it for now. This is the same color as this. That's our blade, so we can delete that. And then I'm actually gonna come in just with a circle. And we'll send it to the back. Uh, so command shift and the left square bracket is sent to back and that sends it all the way to the back. Okay, this is actually open air. So we can just delete that. All right, we're coming together. I don't like that these, so I think what I'm gonna do is actually select, I'm gonna come back to my layer. Um, this is our outline. I'm gonna select our outline and I'm gonna come down one more for the outline because then this, and I'm gonna come up and go to select same fill color and we're gonna change that to that kind of charcoal -y gray because I wanna be able to do um, highlights and shadows and stuff on it, so I don't want everything to be just blacked out. Okay. We're getting there. It's almost done. I would love to say I'm happy with this piece, but <laughs> I'm really not. It, uh, yeah, it's just one of those things. I'm, I'm gonna have to figure some stuff out. 
before the next one. This one, I mean, the drawing is okay. It's just, it's not a piece that I'm really digging right now. And who knows, maybe by the time the shadows and everything and the highlights and all that shit get in here, maybe it'll, it'll work out. But for now, it's just kind of meh. Okay. Uh, I'm going to zoom in on some of these things because this kind of stuff, we're just going to delete. Okay. Figure these out. So what we're going to have to do is take this and all of these other ones. You know what? Let's finish up the blade here first, though, because there's just some pieces in the blade, right? Like that should have been taken out, but I'm not going to worry about it now. Grab that. That's not part of the blade. Is that part of it? Yes. Let me just see here. Yeah, so that's going to be part of the blade. That's going to be part of the blade. And that should be the only two, because this would actually be a gap in just that little plastic piece. Let's grab that and this. And those are going to end up being the same color as the blade. Okay. So a couple of little pieces in there. This will end up being, right, the plastic cover that we talked about. But I'm going to have to grab a few pieces because the plastic cover is actually, it's like this, this, that piece, right? Everything that's kind of covering. We need this and this. So we're gonna have to do something here. I think what I'm gonna have to do there is actually grab this. I'm gonna Command C, Command F. And I'm gonna grab that. Shape folder. Click on that. And I should have that that I can actually cut out. Okay. That works. Command F. That's on our fill tool or fill layer. Okay. And then I can do Command F again, actually, because I'll need another one. All right, we're getting there. So now I think what I'm going to do is a light blue so it actually looks like plastic. Okay, so we're going to grab. Oh, I don't need that. Delete that one. Let's start here. That one too, though. Okay. Now I think we have everything built because I need to be able to copy these and paste them on top so that they can actually be part of the shape. And so we're going to grab each one of these that we need that is covered by this little plastic shield thing. Okay, let's zoom in here now so we can get a few of these smaller pieces. Need that. should be everything. So just in case, I'm actually gonna create a new layer and we're gonna call this shield, just so it's there. Okay, I'm gonna come back down here, Command C, we're gonna click on the shield layer and Command F. And I'm gonna hide, oh, hold on. Let me back up, I did my Command F but it didn't go to the right layer. Um, Here, Command F. 
There we go. Okay, so now I can hide this layer and this layer and just kind of take a look at it. And I think we got every piece. Um, so we should be good. And what I'm gonna do now is just change it all to like a blue color, because we're also gonna change the opacity on it just to kind of give it that sort of plasticky look, feel kind of thing, right? If that makes sense. So if I select everything here, we should be able to come up here to our opacity and just drop it down to like 17% maybe. And then I'm gonna come in on this layer and we're gonna delete all of these little pieces that don't need to be there that are black, right? Because that's kind of the background on it and it shouldn't have any kind of background. It should just be sort of a transparent blue. That should be this color. Okay, let's go with that. Ah, there we go. I think that worked other than maybe changing this color. Uh, select same fill color. And let's just change that one up to maybe not quite that dark. I think that's where I was at. Let's go there and then let's change this. Same fill color one darker okay cool I mean I think it looks good it's not perfect it still needs a few things let's go in and let's do some highlights and some shadows so our shadows I mean there's gonna be a shadow here so the way I like to do my shadows I there's a couple of different ways I do them but I'll select the color that I want, or the sort of the, the spot that I want to put the shadow, right? And what we want to do is, of course, have a radial shadow right here. There's an easy way to do it. Command C, two Command Fs, so I get two pieces, right? Now I've got like both of those. I'm going to select both of them, go over here to my Shape Builder tool, and we're going to knock this out. Now, this one should be there, right? minus back and what that's it's left me with just this little piece here now there's a few different ways you can do this as well this is where i do like using cmyk so if i switch over here now to cmyk and you could do this with hsl too right hue saturation and lightness but i like this one because i can come in here and just go like say 18 and hit enter right and after i've got that first one done I'm good to go. So that just gives it just a little bit of life, right? Now we're starting to see this thing come together. It doesn't just look like this flat piece of plastic on a, on a page or on a canvas. There'd be a little bit of shadow up here as well. So let's zoom in on that one, right? So we're gonna take this, Command C, Command F, Command F. Now this one's a little different because we're gonna have to play with this a little. now. Normally what you can do though is just kind of nudge it a little bit, right? So hold down shift, get it so that you've got overlapping, right? Because what I want is just so that it's off the black. And again, grab both of those, go over here to our Pathfinder, knock out the back. Now you'll see you're going to get extra pieces here. I don't want all of those. So I'm going to ungroup. I'm going to shift click on this one and then delete the rest of them. And then I can come on here, hit my... Uh, eyedropper and there's our little shadow for that one okay so now we got our blade kind of coming together so we can see that we got a little bit of shadow here a little bit of shadow here on this piece now again there'd be what shadow in under here okay well we're going to use this shape for that so command c command f and i'm going to bring it down till we get to right about there maybe a little less so if I go a little less, I don't have to worry about this over here. Okay. So now here's where the difficult part comes in because I need to get rid of all of this outer stuff. Okay. So I'm going to grab this and we're going to command C and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to come back down to the color layer and command F color layer. <laughs> you fucker. It just doesn't want to do it. Uh, yeah, that's always fun when it doesn't want to work. Did this to me earlier, too. Uh, let's delete it. 
Okay, there we go. Now I got it. Um, so it's it's pasted kind of that whole outline onto this layer because you can't do a shape builder on two different layers. So I'm going to come in here. And again, now this time I'm actually going to divide, right click, ungroup, shift click on this one to delete or to, to unselect just that piece. And then when I hit delete, I'm left with just that piece. Okay, so now we can do the same thing. Now, if you notice here, though, we probably should have kept this. And we could have kept some stuff over here. So let's back up just a little bit. Okay, yeah, we could have kept that piece. And we could have brought this down, right? So then I can come in here and just play around with it, a pen tool, and then same here. So we're still divided and we're still ungrouped. So I'm actually going to shift click on that one. And you can tell what hasn't been selected. Okay, because if you see, see here, I don't have that little square, but here I do. And if I come over here, there I don't have it, there I do. So this can still be selected, whereas this can't be. Okay, because it's, it's already selected. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna shift click on that. Oh, what happened there? I'm gonna send that to the back, but I'll do that after. Okay, I'll play with this one a little bit more. I don't want that selected. So now let's delete, okay. So that kept us with this. I'm gonna join these two together and we're gonna go here because I want it that color. And then again, I'm gonna go like 18. And that just gives us that little bit of shadow there, right, for the blade. Now, because I wanna extend this, we're gonna grab that and I'm actually just gonna pull this down there and then we do the same with this one and then we can get that all cleaned up okay and again it's under the plastic and that's what we want okay this one I can just put in by hand. I don't really need to do anything there. Again, there's not gonna be a shadow here because this is just plastic see-through, but I can do one right in here that's gonna continue on. So for that, I'm actually just gonna kind of freehand it. Come in like say that. Okay, again, these shapes aren't something that anybody is gonna see except for you, unless you, of course, you give the shape to somebody. Now we're running into a bit of a layer issue here. So let me see where I'm at. Okay, so I'm still on the shield and I actually want that down here on this layer. So I'm gonna go command, oh, I'm gonna make sure that's all joined up. Command J, okay. That all one shape, Command X here, Command F on that layer. There we go. Okay. This one's not too bad. This should be pretty easy because we can just come in here with like a rectangle. Um, so I'm just gonna go M, make sure I'm on this layer. And we're just gonna do, say a shape about like that. Why? Let me just lock this one. Okay, and I'm gonna duplicate that. So Alt drag over to here. And we could actually do that whole blade. You know what? Let's do that. Let's take this one and just do that whole piece like that, All right? Because that would have that shadow on it all the way across. Okay, now there's one little issue here. Uh, no, oh, there isn't. No, that's part of that shield. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, could maybe do it here. I think we should. I think that shadow should actually continue across here because this is the handle. Right, so it would actually be dark right across here as well and up into here. So let's take this one. Again, same thing. 
but I'm actually gonna come down about like that and over, okay? Zoom in so we can get both of those selected. Again, Pathfinder, knock that out. I'm gonna leave this one. I'm just gonna ungroup them for now because we can use this for our highlight after. So there, they're ungrouped. Now, let me see what happens if we actually end up using that one. It's not bad. I don't like how that's ending up though. So let's take this and just move that up. It's better. And then I'm gonna use the rest of the shape that we've actually got here because I can use these instead of having to draw new ones. Kind of come in and tie everything up here. Okay, and see here, this is one thing that I was talking about. Um, if you notice, I'm trying to get it so that it like lines up to this one and it just, no matter what you do here, you're never gonna get that to work. But if I come in and put an extra anchor point in, that should, this sometimes fixes it. Yeah, see, and now we get line extension from that anchor point. So then if I line this one up to this one, down, grab this one now, and then I can get that line extension over. So then I know they're all lined up correctly. I mean, it's just, it's one of those things, right? Again, just a little annoyance, um, but is what it is. Uh, I think I want more shadow here as well. Um, so we're gonna go with a big one this time though. So I'm gonna go Command C, Command F, Command F, and I'm actually gonna move that one up quite a bit. And then we'll carry that shadow along here. So those two, knock that out. We could use that one too. Okay, ungroup. I'm gonna grab these carry those over to here and then I can knock this one back direct selection Move that a little bit of a gap there okay that we can play with what's going on here let's just delete that piece Same here, I think. Yep. Now, a quick fix for this is to move that over. Do the divide tool, ungroup, shift click on that, and then I can just delete that piece and then that's gone. And then here, we can do a rectangle. All right, so I'm gonna line that up. What I'm gonna do here is actually do a full rectangle. I'm gonna take this, Command C, Command F to paste in front. I'm gonna click on both of these, divide, ungroup, shift click on this one, and then hit delete and I get rid of everything else. And then what we can do is do our eyedropper, select that, come up here and go say 35. All right, now we would have a bit of a shadow down here as well, um, and then some highlights. I'd probably do shadow across this piece and a highlight on here. So let's do this one first. Again, I'm doing the same process here, right? Command C, Command F, Command F. Shift click to hold and drag that down. Highlight this one over here, knock out the back. And now this time we're actually gonna go a little bit different. Um, so here we can go with an HSL uh, if we switch this over and see if that maybe, or sorry, HSB uh, and see if that maybe helps. There we go. Let's say right about there. Gives us a little bit of highlight, I think that works. Let's grab this one that's gonna be highlight as well. 
then I'm gonna switch over CMYK. Nope, we're gonna go HSB. I'm doing too much web design stuff lately. That's why I'm saying HSL. <laughs> if anybody didn't pick that up. Okay, uh, this. I'm gonna turn that over. I'm actually gonna do my little trick here. So drag that all the way over, come over here, divide. Ungroup, shift click, and then delete that section. Now here I'm just gonna freehand it. Come up. Oh. We're gonna come in and go to I'm say right about there. Let's see how that works. a little more width down here. So I'm gonna convert that to a curve anchor. Come in like that. And then this one, do about like that. Okay, that works. Now I'm gonna do something a little bit different here and I'm actually gonna grab this and this I'm gonna go Command C, Command F, and then I'm gonna select this one, and I'm gonna divide them all. Okay, and then we're gonna go ungroup, and I'm just gonna click on this shape here, and this shape here, and everything else can go. And then we get everything back, and that way I can take this one, and grab this color, and again, come up and just do some brightness on it, right, just to give it a little bit of a highlight. The same thing here, Command F, Command F. Uh, I'll play with this one a little bit because I just want it like there. Let's grab that, divide. You know what, that might actually work if I get rid of that. Use that. Ungroup, keep that one, delete everything else. And this one can get that color. Yeah, that works. I'm gonna come down and just play with this one a little bit real quick so that this comes into there. Okay. Now, this can probably go this color because it's kind of hidden underneath button I'm not going to worry about for now this is good we could use just a little bit of darkness here so again command C command F command F see how that one works out let's go with that I think that works grab both of those divide ungroup Deselect this one, delete everything else, and then convert that there. Okay. Um, I think maybe the only thing it's missing is just a rectangle here. And then I'll work on the name and stuff, but I'll probably do that after the fact, uh, just so that I can do it for my post when I put this up on Dribble and Instagram. Other than that, I'd say we're finished. Let's grab this color again. Oh, this time we're good. HSB. We'll go like that. Back out, see how that looks. Now, this is the only way to finish stuff like this. Again, you can come in, you can do like half tones. Um, there's lots of other coloring options that you can do. I'm again, I'm just, I'm just kind of getting back into Illustrator again after a long hiatus. So, if you picked up something out of this, I, I really hope that you did. Uh, if you were disappointed by this video, I apologize. 
more to come. Uh, if you feel like getting that unsubscribe button after this one, I, I would totally not blame you for it. Uh, I hope you stick around. I do have more tutorials coming though, um, and a little bit more content to work on. So that's it for me on this one, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, if you're sticking around, if you're new here, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. You know all the things to do and get out there and design something. I'll see you in the next video.